Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a charge pipe and blow off valve. Uh, well, today is in the same day as last video, which was the muffler delete and downpipe video. Um, so, if you want to see how downpipes and muffler delete sound on an N54, make sure to check that video. Um, but today we're going to be doing charge pipe and blow off valve. Uh, I'm doing VRSF charge pipe and tile blow off valve. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you the parts, I'm going to show you the tools that we need for the job, and then we'll get started working on the car. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the VRSF charge pipe. All right, so it comes with everything you need to replace your OEM charge pipe. It even comes with the little caps that block uh, where the diverter valves normally connect to. So yeah, you got the charge pipe right here. Okay, so this is where the blow off valve connects to. These are the meth bungs, so we have to tighten those to make sure they're not leaking. And then this is where the map sensor connects to. Um, that's the charge pipe, and then that's the elbow. Now we have a vacuum tube right here. And the clamps and all the other good stuff. We'll leave that there. Oh yeah, and the O-ring too. So I bought an O-ring because I don't know what condition my O-ring's in. And I'm going to use the, uh, the factory C-clip. If you want, you can get extra C-clips from their website too. And then we have the uh, tile blow off valve. Another C clamp right here. All right, so let's start off by making the charge pipe unit first. So we're gonna install the tile blow off valve onto the charge pipe and um, all the other fittings and make it one complete unit. And then we're gonna remove the OEM charge pipe from the car and we're gonna swap it direct piece for piece. Okay, so I was just struggling to put this on because the clamp looked like it would never fit onto here but uh, you can pull this and stretch it a bit and it'll uh, go around here. Once you're done with it, it'll look like this. So one part of the ring holds the blow-off valve, one part of the ring holds the charge pipe. All right. Then we just tighten this. So we finished up the charge pipe and blow-off valve unit. Um, yeah, basically this side connects into the intake manifold. And then this side connects into the elbow. Uh, I didn't tighten any of the uh, clamps yet because we have to adjust it once we get into the car. So I just left it on there and then once we uh, maneuver it and get it to fit, we'll uh, tighten it. So now we have to get rid of the OEM charge pipe which involves uh, taking off the intake air box if you have a stock intake or the intake cones if you have a dual cone intake. So let's get into that. Now we're in the engine bay. So that's the charge pipe right over there. So it's a thin plastic tube connected to a rubber elbow. And uh, that's the thing that blows up over time when uh, we start pushing a lot of boost. So that's why we're replacing that. And while we're doing that, we're getting rid of the diverter valves and connecting the tile blow-off valve. So to get here, first we have to remove this piece connected by four screws. We have to remove that piece connected by six or eight screws. Um, and then we get down here. For some reason, my charge pipe isn't connected. Um, there's supposed to be a bolt over there holding it in place, but for mine it's not there. Which is bad, but good, because that means I don't have to get rid of the cones. So that saves some time. Um, yeah, after we remove the diverter valve, we're going to cut the vacuum line right over here. And then connect the supplied vacuum line to the uh, existing one. And we should be good to go. So let's get started, and then we'll see where it goes from there. with the engine cowl off. That's the thing that sits up there. So it was this right here. So basically, you have one, two, three, 
two, three, four, five, six. You remove that, and then you get access to this. This isn't connected, well for my car, it wasn't connected um, by any bolts. I guess you're supposed to have some. Mine didn't have it, so it was a bit easier for me. Um, there were some tubes running across the bottom. These ones. So these, you just put a flat head in, pull these out, they'll come right out. And these sensors, you clip them out, they'll pop out. Where's that one? That one right there. Yeah, so you just, so you just clip them out, and now you have access to all this goodness, okay? So what we have to do now is disconnect this one right here. You just spin it one way. Uh, I think it's either clockwise or counterclockwise. I think they're different for this side and that side, but you take this off, take that one off, you take that one off, and then you take that one off. So we have to take four of them off, and then the vacuum line that connects right here to the diverter valve, you cut it right over there where it splits into two. You cut it right here, and then we're going to add the, uh, the supplied one. We're going to connect it right there. So normally there should be, let me show you, there should be a bolt right over there. But for my car it doesn't have it, so that means I can remove the charge pipe without removing the intake. So that saves me some time. So I'll get started and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so for me, since this nut isn't screwed in, I don't have to remove this. Um, for any of you who may have that nut still there, you have to remove the intake or else you can't get your uh, screwdriver back there. Uh, for me, I'm okay, so I'm not going to remove that, I'm not going to remove this. Uh, I'm going to remove the diverter valves and then remove the one uh, clamp over there and I should be able to get my charge pipe out, so we'll see. We got these unplugged, now we just have to cut the uh, vacuum lines. There shouldn't be anything holding it back now. Alright, so these are the diverter valves, so they recirculate air. This is what we're getting rid of, and in place of this we're going to have the tile blow valve. So instead of circulating air, it's just going to release the pressure into the atmosphere. Alright, so these, no more use. So there's just one clamp right over here. It's a flathead. Uh, we remove that, and then remove the C-clip right over here, and the charge pipe should pop right out too. And then uh, we'll plug in the new one and then go from there. So that's the C-clip. Uh, we have to use this again, so keep it. Um, when you get the charge pipe, you have the option normally of buying another one. Uh, I chose to reuse this, which shouldn't cause any problems. Uh, so I got that nut out, I got the C-clip off. So now the charge pipe should pull right out, but before we do that, we have to remove the map sensor, because we have to add that piece to the new charge pipe. So we just have to remove the wiring for it. So after removing the map sensor, there's nothing else, there should be nothing else holding this back, so we should be able to plug it right out. <clears throat> okay. 
So this is the OEM versus the RSF. So it's basically the same thing, but this is plastic. This is aluminum. And then instead of the diverter valves over here, we have the teal uh, tile blow-off valve right here. Uh, everything else is the same, so it should be pretty much plug and play. Before we can move further, we have to remove the map sensor from the uh, charge pipe right here. So we removed the wire already, but the map sensor itself is on the charge pipe. So we have to remove it from here and use the supplied uh, nuts to screw it right over there on the VRSF charge pipe. Okay, so when you hear that click, that click was the charge pipe connecting into the intake manifold. So now this side is good to go. Pretty much clicked in. You just have to put the C clip on here to tighten that. This side is a pain in the ass because the elbow is kind of big and it's not really fitting. But since it's rubber, we can you know, kind of bend it and make it work. Okay, so after a lot of back and forth, I finally got it to, to fit. So what I did was uh, put in the plastic end on one side, the rubber side on one side, and then put the uh, charge pipe, connect that to the throttle body, and then connect these two together in the middle. So the rubber lets it kind of flex and fit together. Uh, I tried it both ways, it didn't work, this was the way that worked for me. Uh, you guys can try and make it work your own way, but this worked well for me. Uh, now basically everything's in, everything's a good fit. Now there's only a couple things left to do, and they're very important, so you can't forget any of them. First, we have to close this off with the supplied cap. There's one on this side, one on that side. We have to close both of them off. Then we have to connect the blow-off valve to the vacuum line. So they supplied an extension. Uh, we have to use that to connect it. And then finally, we have to put the C-clip back in to the charge pipe near the throttle body, and then connect the map sensor back. And then when we're done that, we should be good. That should be everything. So this is the cap that we're going to use to connect the, that we're going to use to cap off this piece right here. And this is the clip we use to attach to it. So it's pretty easy. We have to do this twice, one on this side and one on that side. We're to connect the map sensor back in all that's left is the vacuum line so that gold bit right over there is where the new line is connecting to the old line they give you the adapter for it so you just connect it and twist it to tighten it and they give you zip ties too so we'll zip tie the ends together and we'll connect it to the blow off valve and that should be it Okay, so now I'm going to start her up and see what happens. Hopefully everything is fine. Oh. 